when WannaCry happened, we'd known that a ransomware worm was going to be our nightmare scenario for about a year. NetYeah is the type of threat that keeps us up at night. My name is Craig Williams. I'm the director of the Talos Outreach Program. I run the teams around the world that look for what's happening on the cutting edge of threats. If you look at the way WannaCry worked, WannaCry is like a 1986 rusty Honda Civic. If you look at like a, you know, Ferrari, that would be Netya. So Netya was polished, it was fast, it did its job quickly, it was efficient. When I see somebody else come out with a new innovative technique that's really successful in compromising devices, all the bad guys are going to copy it. And so as a defender or as a user, we've got to respond incredibly quickly so that we can cut that off as quickly as possible. People think that in order to get into cybersecurity, you could be a criminal, right? Absolutely not. No one is really hired with a criminal background anymore. You meet people like, oh, so you used to break into things and now you're doing it legitimately. Well, no, but thank you very much. It is a very bad stereotype. Isn't it? I'm a detective as a reserve, much like you would be in the reserve military. I do a lot of teaching on cybercrime investigation, forensics, and security in general. It's part of that altruistic thing because we don't get paid for that in Texas, actually. And I see it as a way to give back to the community. My job, Craig's job, the people that work for us, their jobs, are absolutely to stay on top of these things, to research these things, to find these things. We don't just hire really good engineers, we hire really passionate engineers that are creative, that find new ways to do the job, that find ways to automate it through machine learning and new techniques. We block right now around 20 billion threats a day, every single day. Of that 20 billion threats, probably only like one tenth of one percent is interesting. And so our threat intelligence team finds ways to distill that down so that we actually don't have to look at all the stuff we already know. It's a daily race of finding ways to bypass our adversaries' new techniques. We are a lively bunch. It, it's also a very amazing group of individuals, uh, especially within Talos. The goal of the annual security report is to give everyone an idea of what's happened throughout the threat landscape for the year. We are seeing more sophistication in the deployment of malware. We are seeing, of course, that sophistication moving into cloud service architecture. Every time you hear the word cloud, just repeat inside your head, someone else's computer. Now get back to me on how safe you feel that is. For the normal user, there are some very, very simple steps that they can take to improve their security posture. The first one is put everything on automatic update. Second thing is to basically go into your browser and install an ad blocker. The reality is, Malvertising is real. If 2017 was the year of ransomware, I think 2018 is going to be a year of crypto mining. I remember I had an Apple IIgs. That was like my first computer. And uh, I remember figuring out how to get in the control panel to change the colors in like second grade because they made me play number munchers and I didn't like the default color scheme. Uh, and so then I would change it. And I got in a lot of trouble because none of the teachers knew how to change it back. And I just thought that was hilarious. And so from about then on, I was hooked. I would say in my fun time, I absolutely would be doing this anyways, right? I've, I've been in the security community since I was in my late teens. This is the thing that we kind of geek out about. It is kind of our passion. Hey, Omar, welcome to the show. Is that, here's with Talos that you guys do, your way of <laughs> venting and letting your personalities come out? That's pretty much unfiltered Talos, yes. Listen to him backpedaling. It's an interesting break from the corporate culture to work with people in an environment like this because we really have the ability to almost operate like a startup within Cisco. 